Archon is real battle chess. It's Iris Sinclair. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Iris Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Archon. Oh, man. You know, Archon, Aaron, I was doing a little bit of research. And by research, I mean I was looking around randomly on YouTube. <laughs> and when you type in Archon, you get weird stuff. Now, Aaron, I know you're into weird stuff. So there is apparently, like, you've heard of shadow people before, right? Absolutely, yes. So apparently there are other creatures that are somewhat related to shadow people, but of alien origin, called Archons. Have you heard of these guys before? I don't think I'm familiar with that particular uh, avenue of lunacy, but... There are a series of videos hosted by, I would say, you know, anywhere from between 25 and 45-year-old uh, women that sit in front of their laptops with earbuds in, and mm -hmm. talk about their experiences with Archons. Yeah. I watched every single one of these videos. I will say, this sounds like a brilliant topic for our other, our sister show, Conversations from the Dark Side. <laughs> and I can marry, it's a marriage of my two favorite things, Archon and Archon, the weird paranormal activity. Yeah. What was the scoop on these guys? Are they lizards? Are they aliens? Godlike creatures, they dead. Well, they are they are they are shadow people, but they're not your normal shadow people. Some people think they're in league with the shadow people, though. They hover just on the edge of existence. And uh they're they're definitely a, you, you you laugh. I just I love it when they have like a paranormal team up, right? You it's know, the like mountain, the Justice League. The mountain monsters guys. They were, they did a thing one year where they went through every county in in West Virginia and they talked about the monster they found, right? And I, I was like, man, I can't wait till they get to Putnam County because I don't know what I don't know what we got. It Is turns there, out. I mean, do you think there's well, fifty five discrete monsters? Well, no, we've got a great team up here because most guys you get one guy, right? Mm -hmm. Putnam County, we got two guys. Who knew? that the Putnam County Bigfoot was assisted by a chupacabra. I didn't see that coming. Think about what kind of relationship. <laughs> What's the dinner table conversation like at that at, at that net cave? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if they reside at the same place, you know? <laughs> it's, like, you I like, I think it's your turn to take out the garbage, chupacabra. The way the Mountain Monster guys told it was that, like, the chupacabra was sort of the Bigfoot's pet. Oh. You know, of course, these are the same guys that tried to capture the Mothman with a giant electrified cage that hung from a, sus from a suspension bridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's gold toss, solid gold. They almost got him. <laughs> so, now, these guys, they've already come. They've already come to Putnam County, right? Oh, this was uh, five, seven, eight years ago, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I wonder. It's, it is sort of weird. I guess, you know, there is... I'll read to you from the wiki page. Um, Archons are, in fact, the builders of the physical universe. Really? Yeah, so it makes you wonder why they're hanging around in the shadows, you know? Well, listen, there's, there's, a, there's a dimensional issue there, Bo. That's true. That That's we true. can't... Some people like us can't comprehend. What I wonder is why they're anywhere near us, period. <laughs> if they built the universe... Let's, hey, let's go freak out those geeks on Earth. That's what they're doing. And I don't blame him for that. I'll give you that. Now, it's it's somewhat unfortunate, but somewhat not that Archon, the game, doesn't really have anything to do with these particular paranormal creatures. However, it is a battle of the light and the dark. Let's talk about that, it, Aaron. Right. That's the kind of music that takes your breath away, Boat. You know what I mean? I mean, it took Archon has always been known for its rousing theme. Oh, man. It rouses you all right. It rouses the heck out of you. So, Archon. I mean, this is one of those games. That there are, if you look back in the history of the home computer, and in this case, a few consoles, there are some games that pop out at you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the big dogs. And this one is amongst the biggest dogs. The game that helped put EA on the map, uh, the game that was a uh, uh, universally praised, 
uh, back in the day. And it's a simple concept that it was executed mostly flawlessly on most machines. And so I was interested to see how this thing would fare on the uh, ZX here. So uh, this, now we're going to get into some weirdness here shortly, but we're going to talk about the original release of uh, Archon, as Boat mentioned, also called Archon, the Light and the Dark, uh, released in 1985, Boat, way back. And this was a game that was put together by, uh, uh, I believe the name was Paul Rice the Third and Westfall. I believe there was a third guy that was involved, too, that worked on this one uh, originally. And then eventually, of course, this got ported everywhere. Uh, in this case, uh, it got brought uh, to the ZX uh, by a fellow named Tony Barber. You know, I love looking up these different programmers and artists that work on these games, but because we always see stuff that, that we've got to try. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And this week, it's a cavalcade of crap. Write this stuff down, okay? <laughs> so, Tony Barber... Uh, did, a, aside from some utility work, he did a ton of games, including one simply called THINK, with an exclamation point in you all caps. Think. I like that one. He did Cold It's. Uh, he did Call uh, Yeah, we did that one. Looney Zoo, and Video Hell, oh. and Zark. Uh, he was <laughs> assisted by Simon Dunstan, who worked with him on Cauldron. Now listen, Dunstan, listen to some of this guy's stuff. Mr. Weems and the She Vampires. <laughs> Is that the full title? Yes. This, I thought I thought they were two separate games for no. a second. No. Okay. Also, we've got to try out Quest for the Golden Egg Cup. <laughs> Where are these games, Clive's I Club? I don't know. That's... Three Days in Carpathia. <laughs> you know that's gold. So these guys put together a lot of fun stuff here. Uh, this was a uh, two-player joint, one to two, and... Originally, boat. This one would set you back ten pound ninety five p. That's a bargain anywhere on earth, brother. Uh, that's free money. Um. So, what is Archon? Did you know this game has a backstory? No. <laughs> it does. If you if you allow me to, I can't to wait get to into it. it. So, here's the. I got the back of the of the tape box. Okay. So, this, the back of this thing says, it's just simply titled, The Legacy of the Gnostics. All right? Or Gnostics. Gnostic. The G. the G is silent. The world, the Gnostics said, is ruled by the great and evil Archon. This is what I just got done talking to you about. It is no, the no. same thing. It you know, keeps going. Whose empire stretches as far as the firmament. Yeah. But even for Archon, life isn't easy. In another universe, it's another Archon. It's just like two counties over. It's mere universe, yeah. He wants your empire. The outcome of the war will determine the one true archon. You'll want to make sure it's you. You'll use every troll, basilisk, and dragon you have, and all the other slimy, conniving underlings you can find, to fight <laughs> the phoenixes and genies of the enemy archon. That's a pretty good build-up here. Yeah, it is. To what you've got going on. Because I really never thought about the, a, a, an actual background story to this Well, we game. never actually had the box or the docks or anything like that. That's this a good point, Boat. That's a valid point. So, this game takes place on sort of what you would uh, call a chessboard. Uh, the ha the chessboard, what was it, about 10 by 10, Boat, if I'm, if I'm counting right here? Yeah, I think it's and 10 by 10. And you, there are two sides you can play, as the box infers, the darkness and the light. Uh, the uh, light side, and keep in mind, think chess pieces here, okay? The light side is uh, led by a wizard. Uh, you've got a unicorn, an archer, a golem, a valkyrie, a genie, a phoenix, and a, and a bunch of knights. They're the geeks, right? Then the dark side's got a sorceress. She's evil. Uh, by the way, another woman in gaming. A basilisk, a manacore, troll, shapeshifter, dragon, banshee, and a bunch of geeks that are goblins. All right, those are the two individual sides and all of the minions. So, how do you play this game? Well, uh, you, it's one to two player, and you basically pick a guy with a cursor and move him around the board. And different uh, characters can have different sorts of movements. For example, your geekiest characters might only be able to move, say, three squares. Some of your characters can fly. So they can literally fly over 
some of the, some of the guys that are on the ground in front of them to allow you to move around them. Uh, sprinkled along the board at the compass points, basically plus one in the middle, are our power our power points. Okay, the goal of this game is to capture all these power points, boat. Uh, and to do this, you'll have to claim them. And if you want one that someone else has claimed, you got to fight for it, brother. And that's when this game gets down and funky. Because when you move one of your pieces to where an enemy is, or vice versa, the battlefield pops up, and you have to have a throwdown with the opponent. All those different characters I mentioned have different powers. Uh, for example... Uh, knights and and uh, goblins just basically swing a swing a club or, or a sword respectively, while stuff like dragons uh, and the wizards, sorcerers, unicorns they can actually shoot from across the screen at varying uh, de degrees of quickness and whatnot, and do uh, varying degrees of damage. Uh, and whoever loses all their hit points in these little mini battles is the big loser. On top of that. Uh, your magic-using characters, the wizard and the sorceress, can also do things like summon help. They can imprison people. They can raise the dead if one of your guys gets killed. They can teleport, swap stuff around. They've got magical powers. And then one other key element that often gets overlooked is the board is made up basically of, like, white, black, and sort of gray tiles. And your team's overall strength is, is determined... Uh, or is augmented if you're on more white, if you're the light, or more black, if you're the dark. So you, moving into these uh, areas is key, and battling in them is key. So if you're going to fight your enemy, you kind of want to lure them into your color, so they have to kind of fight you on your turf, effectively. And this goes back and forth until you've either captured all the power points, or you've killed all your enemy, and you win the game. Uh, Bo, do you remember where you first played Archon? Uh, the first time I played Archon was actually for this show. Really? Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, I never played this on the Atari. It always seemed confusing to me, and I didn't know what was going on, so I just turned it off. Yeah, but um, really, it's it's brain dead simple. It is. Once you the way that you described it, I wish somebody would have described it to me that way, because then I would have been like, "All right, I'm on board." Um, but yeah. the first time I played this was on the Amiga, uh, and uh, yeah, the Amiga version uh, surprisingly doesn't look so much different. <laughs> than yeah. this version. They didn't do a lot in upgrading the graphics. Yeah, this is one of those games, sort of like to say like a Manic Miner or something. They pretty much, they never really screwed with them that much. Even if you could do it, they just didn't. And so this is one that didn't. Now, there are some versions that are worse than others, uh, but uh, I did the majority of the play of this when I had it, uh, when I had, got to play it on the Atari uh, 8 bits. Which I think probably, in my opinion, is the, is your premier version. Yeah, I, I do remember reading it was the initially programmed version. Yeah, it's quite good, and it, there the, the <clears throat> this ZX version is lacking in some of the things that you can do on the on the Atari version. For one thing, skill levels. Uh, you could also there's a way to uh, uh, to basically have the computer fight for you, and you just basically it's called cyborg. You just basically move the pieces around if you don't want to get involved in the fighting. Uh, and it just the the overall look of the game is better. Uh, the characters uh, are in the ZX version, for example, the projectiles are all pretty much the same. They're the same size. Like they vary in the other versions I've played, especially the the Atari 8 bit version. Like, they, the characters move different. The sound, the, there's way more sound effects. I would call the ZX version of this the real bare bones. The uh, the, the battlefields are less interesting looking. They're just, they remind, really, it's, in some ways, this almost looks like something you could have put on, like, the Odyssey. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, what I, listen, I'm not going to kill this thing. It plays, I played several games uh, of Archon on this. And, they, it, and you can play Archon, but, I mean, you, this is really your bare bones version of the game in almost every respect. And the other versions I played, for example, when you start the game up, the other guys march out to the field. And they march two at a time, and you can see all the different characters that come out. There's, a, there's more sound effects. There's more panache. The the game also... The, I, this is one of the... I think this is the only time I've ever had games of this where I would fight another character, and we would both die so many times. Like, double kill. That hardly ever happens, but I had it happen like four or five times when I was playing these games on here, which I thought was kind of goofy. Uh, the controls are okay. 
They're okay. The hit detection is not that good. Although that's that's something you're going to find on a lot of versions of, of Archon. It's the hit detection is not the best. But on this version, it just didn't seem very good at all. Uh, I had trouble firing sometimes correctly. I, other versions have an, an, an audible tone that lets you know when you're, re, when you're reloaded. And so does this one. But it's not that good. It's just... <laughs> It's the tone is it doesn't always sound out like it should for whatever reason. I played this on the uh, Mister and uh, uh, watched some video to confirm that it was playing the way it should, and for the most part, it seemed to be playing the way it should. I thought the uh, computer in this was also sort of it was cheap, but also dumb. Uh, one thing I noticed about the ZX version is if you lured the computer into an area with a bunch of obstacles, it would bounce around like an idiot. And you would actually have a shot at beating it. I, I didn't beat the computer when I played it, but I did come very close a couple times. But just circumstances led me to lose. Uh, what did you think about your experience, Boat? Well, this is a game that is always going to look sort of abstract and simple. It was yeah. designed to look abstract and simple. So you can't really look at the sprites on the screen and say, well, this looks bad because this is just how Archon always looks. It's meant to look like a chessboard where there's abstract representations of your piece. However, yeah. there are definite varying degrees of quality within this, uh, this setup. And the first thing, like you said, is that one of the things that really makes you pumped up to play Archon is when you first fire it up, you watch those pieces come out on the board. And it's not just cool, but it also introduces you to all these different pieces in the game because, you know, this isn't chess. You know, you, when you play chess, most people know what pieces do what, or they have some idea. In this game, who knows what the heck a Manticore does, what its powers are, but it tells you what level it is. Well, and again, and this is the Atari 8-bit version, it tells you what level it is. It tells you what it can do if it's a flying enemy or not. And that's important to know. You keep that in mind. So when it's your time to go, you, you know, because this game doesn't have a HUD. One of the things that I think all the versions of this game could have benefited from is not just telling you that at the, at the very beginning, but also when you're hovering over a piece, uh, you know, telling you what the piece is and what it does. Um, and, the, and that's something that the, the Spectrum version doesn't do. The other thing, like you mentioned, is the sound design. The sound design in this game could have been a whole lot better. Uh, I'm not asking for orchestral music here. What I'm asking for is give me really, really clear tones. Because like you said, in this game, in the combat section of this game, rate of fire is everything. Because each of your, you and your opponent each have a very specific and predetermined rate of fire. And once you fire your projectile and your enemy fires their projectile, you're basically, it's a race to see who can get in a position to fire that next projectile first. In most versions of the game, there's a very clear tone that sounds when you've reloaded. In this game, I was never quite sure what that tone was because there's also tones that when you're running around, you hear tones. When you're being fired upon, you hear tones. When you get hit, you hear tones. Yeah. And so that that was really a weak point in this game. Also, the animations, uh, especially of the your troll uh, or your gnome-like guys, whatever the pawns are, in the Atari 8-bit version of the game, they actually swing their club. In this version of the game, they go at like Mach 6. And at first I was like, man, I wonder if this game is playing too fast, but it's not because of the other characters, they 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 kind of were animated at a, at a reasonable speed. I don't yeah. know why they decided to make the gnome look so wacky or the, 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 the gnome guy look so wacky. Uh, if we're looking at the Atari 8-bit version now, you can see there's a discrete animation when he swings his club. Goblin. That's what goblin. they call Goblin, yeah, sorry, yeah. Goblin. Uh, and you don't get that at all in the ZX Spectrum version, and that could have easily, easily been done on, on the, on the it's, Spectrum. The swinging, the guys that swing swords and clubs are, it's fun. <laughs> I, I think they're actually kind of super deadly in the ZX version. Because you're, I mean, you're right. And they are fast. I mean, I had all kinds of trouble, and usually you can just destroy them easy because you just get away from them. But the, 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 it's the, the timing of the characters is weird in this because some of the really good characters are super slow. Mm -hmm. You know, plus other effects, the Banshees effect, for example, it sucks. I hated it in this. Uh, I just there was. It's funny when you look at these two games side to side like we're doing now. Uh, it, they don't seem totally dissimilar, but they play totally differently in every way. And it's not just because I'm used to one. I mean, they're just, they play differently. And, Bo, you you can obviously figure that out yourself. It's a different sort of game. Now, it, again, 
it plays a, ba a decent game. So I'm not going to bury it. But, I mean, I had hoped, I had higher hopes of Boat, if I'm, if I'm honest. Uh, and then, suddenly, you called, you called me up earlier today and asked me something that baffled me. Tell the people what that was. So I said, Aaron, have you played the other version of Archon for the Spectrum? <laughs> and you said... What other version, Boat? <laughs> so I was sitting there on the on the recliner, as I do, playing Archon on the ZX Spectrum. And something in my mind just said, check and see if there's another version. At first, I thought that somebody had mentioned another version on the Discord. But I went back and checked, and nobody did. So this was like, maybe it was an Archon, Aaron. Maybe it was one of the guys. They were yeah. like, hey, check out my other game. So uh, I, I went, and I noticed that there was a much later release in my list of, of tap files uh, from 1989, Electronic Arts 1989. And this is a game that I did not see. I'm sure that obviously we're looking at the, the video footage here, so other people know about this, but this is not something that I see a lot of people playing. This is a totally different version of Archon for the ZX Spectrum. Uh, what they've done here is that they, and I don't know if this is something that was uh you know released on its own we know aaron that it was released as part of the archon collection right well here's what i've there's very little it's funny no one's talking about two versions of archon <laughs> on the zx i'll tell you nobody i was baffled and so i tried to look into it so as best i could tell in 1989 there was a uh release called the archon collection all right it was only released like the atari got it and i think or i think zx got it i think the atari uh, got it and the amiga got it and the amstrad that's who got it okay the amiga the uh, archon collection it's a separate two game it's it basically it's just archon and its sequel archon 2 adept okay uh, I, and and so i think that this archon was part of that collection i think uh, but it's a it's a wholly different version of the same game. Yeah. And you played this, but I didn't get to play it. And so what they've done is they've redrawn all the sprites. They've made everything look more crisp and more clear. Uh, they've made they've improved the combat significantly. It plays a lot more like the Atari 8-bit version. Uh, there are more uh, there are more back like when you're in a battle place, you can kind of. Uh, you can pass through objects like you can in the Atari 8-bit version. It's not just like barriers. Um, everything about the game is better. And it's a shame that I don't think anybody knows that this game exists. Because this is the version. It even has, there's a, there's even a, a scale on the side of the screen that shows you like who has got the advantage. Uh, it is it is just, they did, Edmund asked they improved the sound. They did. They improved the sound in this version, too. Not only did they give you a tone when you reload, but they also give you a little dot on the screen when you have a, when you have a bullet in the chamber, as it were. It makes the game so much more fun to play. Uh, I really, really turned around on the ZX Spectrum version of Archon playing this version rather than the original version from 1985. Um I don't know much about like you know what what Aaron has read is is what we know basically about about this release, uh, but uh, this is the one to play the one from 1989. I will say again, having just found out about this one today, right before the show, I this one looks like the original version for the ZX looks sort of like the eight bit versions that we've seen. All right, this one's pretty radically different. The look of it is totally different. The, uh, the characters all, I mean, they look sort of the same, but they're not. The board's, like, wider or bigger. The uh, the the scale at the top, that's a whole new way to look at the uh, light and darkness. It's a good idea. You know, one frankly. thing that I'm just now noticing, Aaron, is I don't see any PowerPoints on the board. That is, that is strange. Yeah. Is that... <laughs> So maybe well, they maybe they took that element out in this version, which would be I don't a know how you could even do that. Game. To be honest with you, so this one bears more this play for me before I pass judgment. But I, it is interesting to see that they would redo the game. And the thing is, it must have had little impact because I, like I said, I looked high and low to try to find anyone anywhere that was talking about there being two versions of this, and I can't find anybody. That, that has been talking about it. So if you're watching this uh, later on uh, on YouTube, please, uh, if you know anything we don't, drop us a comment. And if you hear this uh, on the uh, on podcast, drop us a note 
if you have any information, because this one is quite a mystery, and we are uh, we are uh, neophytes in the realm of the ZX boat, so there might be someone out there that knows more about it than me. But it does excite me to think that they improved on what was what I would call a lackluster version of the game. You know, at the end of the day, it, it, we always talk about how at the end of the system's life, sometimes you get some real duds because you know that most people have moved on by then. Yeah. And, uh, and there's, uh, there's not really an incentive to make something of quality, but every once in a while you get a game like this. Now, again, I'm not the Archon expert you are, and I would love, I would love for you to fire this up on a spectrum disaster stream some an evening and give yeah. it a round or two. Cause uh, I'd like to know what you think about it, but this could be an example of one of these hidden gems from late in the spectrum's life that actually is, is, is pretty great. Yeah. I'll absolutely have a look. And I should mention that uh, Archon, of course did have, uh, had a sequel that was also released on the ZX that I, I'm sure we'll look at someone on the line. Uh, call, it's called Archon 2 Adept, which I think is the, far and away the best of the two games. Uh, and I did look at the version of that that was in the uh, Archon collection, and it didn't look any different at all. So I could, I don't think they gave it the same treatment boat that they gave this. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I could tell, it was untouched. Of course, mm -hmm. it came out later than this. And looked, it had graphical updates and whatnot, as you would expect. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, it, it, this is odd. This is a real mystery uh, to me. Um so I looked around to see how this was, a, 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 you know, Archon as a game was widely praised across all platforms. It was, uh, it's in the, it was number 20 on the 150 best games of all time, all time list by Computer Gaming World. Uh, it was, uh, it had all sorts of, it was a top 10 best C64 game in GameStar. It's got all sorts of, uh, of accolades. Uh, in terms of the ZX version of it, it was there. I don't think it was hated, uh, but the average magazine score amongst three or four reviews I saw was about 74%. Mm -hmm. I would say that's it. For, this is for the original game, mind you. I would say that's a pretty fair assessment of it, uh, you know, if you ask me, because it's not as... It's the low, probably the worst version I've played. I haven't played this on the... I believe the NES got a port of this boat. Yeah, uh, and I don't. I don't know if you've tried that version. I have I not. Have uh, there's a top game design or the game design lexicon says the NES version is the strangest in the chat. Yeah, so I have to check that out. This appeared on every eight bit home system you could think of, including stuff like the Mac and the PC eighty eight. This was released on the Palm Pilot boat. <laughs> you can believe that. Uh, I believe this had a booter disc. It also, uh, uh, I should mention that uh, this, there were sequels beyond the Amiga uh, that were probably not as well liked. Uh, and but I will say this is important news in 2023. They have announced. I think last year this was announced. There's an updated version of Archon in the works that will release exclusively for the Intellivision Amico. So everyone can get excited <laughs> about that. Uh, it's just around the corner. Yes, sir. Did we get any Discord action on this boat? Unfortunately, Aaron, I believe for the first time in our Sinclair history, uh, Archon received no uh, user reviews. So not not the most popular game in the world, apparently, amongst the Sinclair family. You know, I think this is one of those games <clears throat> that it's... It, first of all, it aged wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I played two... I played three or four games of it uh, on, of the, uh, on the more lackluster ZX version... And still had fun. I think it aged well. I mean, you can play this right now, but if you're not someone that was into this game back in the day or wasn't in the know, I think this one didn't age well because it's it looks very basic. It looks like a game that re it would not be that much fun but by yourself, uh, which it, you can play. It's One player works well. Uh, two players is better, but one works well. Uh, and I think people just look at the age of it because it's so ancient, and I think they just... Kind of rule it out. I beseech you, if you've not tried Archon, try it on any system. Uh, even the one on the ZX, the early one, is is okay. Uh, and if you could try it on another machine, try it. Because I think this one is uh, one that uh, it people talk about it for a reason. Uh, because it is a solid gold, solid gold money boat in the gaming uh, history books. That's why it's mentioned so frequently.
Yeah. All right, Aaron. Let's leave Archon and talk about what we are playing next week. Well, who knows, but let's have a look, shall we? Oh, man. There it is. The it had to happen eventually. The exploding fist. Holy cow. Yes, you know, Aaron, some people watch our Sinclair and they say, how did they choose these games? Well, I'll tell you. We have a group of fine, fine folks known as Clive's Club. They are the group that picks these games for us. Uh, Wanderly Chesham, Mr. Rocket, Mitsuyama, Richard Goulstone, Paul Harrington, McChessers, Jed Byrne, Justin Tenpot Gamer, Orc Meal, and Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky. Big shout out to those guys for choosing just yeah. game after game. We very rarely have games on the spectrum that are just total duds. Most of all of them have at least some redeeming features. Yeah. And uh, of course, Archon has more than a few. Yeah, I've been waiting to try this on any machine. So I was real excited to play it. And I, and your uh, discovery of a second version fills me with warmth and delight, Boat. So I think yeah. this was a show that, that uh, it was important. For the Archon community boat. Absolutely. And, of course, if you're interested in joining the Our Sinclair community, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Our Sinclair. You can join all of our supporters, including Scott Partlow, Davey Sloan, Chris Munch, Pajaco6502, Will Brooker, Stephen Wilcott, Chartel, Nathan Mills, Doug Berry, David Terrace, Andrew Waite, Eric Nelson, Cap'n Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Mark Downey, Peter Molland, Chris Folds, Mark Durham, and Pixels at Dawn. Yeah. Thank you very much, y'all. I want to throw in an early word for Mr. Weems and the She Vampires boat. <laughs> Get that on the list, guys. You can do it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to Ars and Claire. We will see you next time. And until then, rewind tape and press play. <laughs> <laughs>